that'll really fit. No, I, I know. But let's we'll take off some of that wet, wet bark. Not only is that not going to burn very well, but it's also... No, no, it feels like this is the only part to rip off all that. Yeah, rip off all the bark. There's also probably living creatures underneath there, so... <laughs> Everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm making a Dakota fire hole. The benefits of making a Dakota fire hole, which is a fire down under the ground versus just a fire up on top of the ground, uh, well there's a number of them. One of them is that the fire is allowed to burn hotter and cleaner because getting all the heat kind of bouncing back at it, uh, and that just makes everything you know burn better, burn cleaner. Uh, you can work with materials that maybe are a little bit wetter and they're still going to burn okay. Uh, it also makes it so that you can't really see the fire from the surrounding landscape because down it, it's down underground. And again, also because of that, that cleaner burn, there's going to be a little bit less smoke coming out of the fire. And, you know, the reason you might want to do that are several fold that, you know, in a total grid down collapse SHTF situation, you know, maybe you don't want the cannibals finding your camp. But even just during, you know, regular times, maybe you just want to be a little bit more subdued. Maybe you're camping in an area where you're not 100% certain it's okay to camp and you just, you know, you don't want to g attract any attention to yourself. But again, also it burns cleaner, more efficient, and you know, it saves the earth. You know, a little less smoke. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that today. The reason I'm actually putting this together today is in my Alien Invasion series, which is the fun way to learn survival skills. If you're not familiar with the series, here's a link here. You can click on it and catch up on the series. It's, uh, you know, my, I play a character that's trying to survive an alien invasion and, you know, demonstrating a bunch of survival skills while you do it, so it's fun. Uh, in the episode that I'm working on right now, my character is wanting to make a Dakota fire hole, and uh, he's digging with this stick, uh, because he, he doesn't have a shovel. But, uh, you know, for getting the, the scene set up, I figured, you know, why take an hour to do it with a stick when I can do it really quickly with a shovel and make a video about it, too? So, I mean, seriously, ain't nobody got time for this. So, uh, I'm going to start digging here, and the, the, the basic structure of a fire, a Dakota fire hole, is that you have uh, one pit that is for your, your burn area, and that's like, you know, you maybe want that like a foot and a half, or depending on, on the size of your fire. Uh, and then you have a corresponding hole next to it, so you get these two pits next to each other, and then there's a trench that goes between the two. And the idea is you burn in one pit, the air goes down into the other, across a little trench tunnel, not a trench, a tunnel, a tunnel that connects the two, uh, and that works kind of like a rocket stove. So the air goes in, comes in from the bottom, and burns up through it. So uh, I'm going to start digging that right now, and uh, then I'll go over the, the way you want to kind of stack the wood in there to get the cleanest burn. As you can see, i got the two holes co coming together right here. This is going to be the main burn pit, and this is the one that's supplying air over to this other one. Now you see, as I've done them, they're just about the same size, and that's just because I'm using the same shovel, but they don't have to be. Usually when you see someone make a Dakota fire hole, it's almost like they have two identical pits, and then they make... A, uh, a tunnel between the two of them. But this one here does not need to be as big as that one. This one really is only serving as an air conduit to get air to the very bottom part of this over here. And really, if you can reach your arm down into this hole and over to the bottom here, that's going to be sufficient to get the airflow. Now again, they look about the same here because I'm using the same shovel and it's just convenient for me to do so. But if you're using different tools, you don't have a shovel, if you are digging with just a digging stick, if you can just get a narrow hole right here that reaches all the way down to the bottom over here, that's going to be perfectly sufficient for you to be feeding air to the bottom of the fire. All right, I'm just about to be able to bridge between these by making the tunnel, and actually the best tool for that kind of thing usually is a stick, because uh, you don't want to make a gigantic hole all the way down. Just, just a small hole is going to allow the air to get over into this pit. So I'm just going to use this and just kind of punch through from one side and the other. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and again, as long as you can reach your hand through, that's going to be enough to supply air for this fire. All right, so now the two holes are all set, and the next step is to put wood in here. <laughs> Now, there are some different ways that you can put wood in. Uh, River here is helping me. And uh, the idea is that you want the, this fire, whereas normal fires you kind of light them at the bottom and they burn up through the fuel. Uh, that's kind of the way you start this fire, but as much as possible, if you can get the fire on top 
and have it burning down through your fuel, that's really going to reduce a lot of your smoke because the, the fuel that is uh, beginning to be ignited as it goes down uh, is underneath the fire. So all the smoke from uh, the beginning stages of, of ignition is going to have to go up through the fire and get burned as it goes through. So you're going to have a lot less smoke. So the idea what you want to do is take a lot of just deadfall stuff. Always use deadfall stuff. I, I know a lot of people go camping and, and they bring an axe and they're just chopping down trees. Not only is that just, I mean, it's bad for the trees, but even if you, even if you don't care about the trees at all, even if you're the kind of person that would just love to see the earth, our life support system, just go down the tubes and drain, uh, what? Oh, it's a little cricket, yeah. E even if you care nothing about the planet at all whatsoever, you know, God help you, uh, it's better to use deadfall stuff anyway because it's drier, it's easier to ignite. Although that said, everything that I am working with here, and you can kind of tell by the way it's, it's uh, not just snap, well, if, if you're accustomed to, to uh, working with uh, dry wood, you can tell that this stuff is a little wet because it's, it's kind of shre shredding and it's bendable. Uh, we just got the uh, remains of Hurricane Florence through the area. The entire area has just been saturated. And that's another reason why it is safe to do this here. Now, if the ground was super dry and if there was a lot of what they call duff, like decomposed bits of leaves and sticks and twigs and roots and things like that down in the ground, putting a what fire... Is yeah, that is, no, that's the green, uh, the green of the bark. All this stuff is just very wet. Um, having a, a very dry hole, if you build a fire underground, it can spread out underground and it can start a forest fire somewhere. We just received, I have no, a, a lot of rain. Uh, the, the, all the ground here is super wet. Um, you know, the mosquitoes are coming back. Why don't you, you can chase the mosquitoes off with you and come back. I think they all followed you, River. Uh, so it's very safe to put a fire in here and there's no, no sense that it's going to go spreading underground anywhere. So I'm taking all this really wet stuff and popping it down into the hole down here. River and I are just finishing up putting the last few sticks in here. You can actually keep grabbing more sticks. We're going to put some on top. And I'm going to get the fire actually going. Now, if you're out camping in the wilderness, you know, surviving out there, you know, you can make a bow drill or whatever you want to do. But I always like to just take the easiest method that I have available to me at any moment. And I have lots of old milk cartons, and I have newspaper, and I have matches. So I'm just going to do that. But certainly you could light this fire with any method that you have, but for patience and keeping people in entertained, uh, I, I'm just going to do it with matches. Though this is a challenging matchbox because the strike pad on this is really getting garbagey. And um, I think it's actually, if, if we had sun today, it would probably be actually be easier to start with a magnifying glass than, than with the strike pad. But we'll do the best that we can. And these these kind of waxed cartons always burn really well because the, the the covering on them, the wax, is kind of a propellant. So these these tend to work really well as long as they're dry. These are all have been, all been dried out. How do you think we're ready? We're ready to light it right now. So this is the trick here: is these matches. These are really ancient matches. I got these from my uh, my grandmother years ago, and I, I don't know how long she had them for, but they're really old matches. The bad strike pen. There we go. Don't want it to blow out. All right. And we're going to light it on the paper there. And now what we can do is just keep laying stuff on. Now we've got a lot more of this stuff that we can start laying on there. And that's the elephant. Yeah. Once you get a flame going in your fire, especially in a situation where you were doing it with a more difficult method, you know, either a bow drill or anything like that, you really want to preserve that. So once you get the flame going, you want to make sure that that flame does not go out on you. And everything is really humid right now. That really looks good. You can already hear the rush of air coming through this because we have air going in through the bottom here and coming up through the top. This is essentially a rocket stove that we've created here. And the physics of it are already working really well. I, just, I, I, I don't want to get close to it. It's really hot. Well, if you stand over here, you're fine. All right. It's good that you're being cautious, though, about it. That's, that's a good thing to be. It's a lot easier to prevent yourself from being burned in the first place than it is to heal from it, being burned after you get burned. 
Right. And it's reasonably well established at this point. This is all wet material. And you can see, for a fire with this much wet material in it, there's very little smoke coming out. I mean, there's still a little bit. We're still kind of getting the thing established. But the idea is that it's really focusing the heat in there, and we're getting some pretty clean combustion, despite the poor quality of the materials we have. So a Dakota foxhole is a great way of doing a fire that is visually not that obvious, that doesn't have that much smoke, that is uh, a cleaner burning, and also you're able to really focus the heat on anything that you put over this fire because... Uh, you know, it's not, it's not going out to the sides. It's being reflected back in and out and up. And uh, it just works really great for cooking things as well. It's, all, it's also easy to kind of just put a grate down right on top of it. And you can put your pots down there. It just, uh, it's a great way of doing it. So that's it. I hope you find that helpful. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.